What's going on guys, Kelly Gaines back here again with some more reactions to political things. This one's called Jordan Peterson, I'm not anti-feminist Q&A session. Now the description says, Jordan Peterson says that he's not anti-feminist but that there's a brand of radical feminism that insists that our culture is an oppressive patriarchy which he views as an appalling sociological doctrine. So we're gonna find out exactly what he means, guys. Let's get straight to it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's go. I would say is that um, I'm not anti-feminist per se. I mean, I think the idea that the world would benefit from the movement of talent from both sexes into the workplace as rapidly as possible is something that anyone with any sense should share given the rather, uh, the rarity of talent and the necessity for for utilizing it. Yeah. Um, I do stand by my original statement though that there's a brand of more radical feminism that that insists that our culture is best characterized as an oppressive patriarchy and I think that first of all that that's an appalling sociological doctrine and I think it has very negative psychological effects mm. and they won't be limited to men because in, if it's true that there's something toxic, let's say, about masculinity per se, what that will ine inevitably mean is that as women adopt more masculine roles, traditionally, what, what is that toxicity somehow going to go away? But that's a so strong man because no one says there's anything toxic about masculinity per se. What do you mean no one says that? The, the term exists. No, no, they How is that a straw it's man? It's well, well where did the term come from? It's a phrase that's used about forms of masculinity that are harmful to men and women. It's not about masculinity per se. You must know that. I read the American Psychological this. Association guidelines for the treatment of boys and men, and I know perfectly well that this is no strong ma straw man. And it's not only devoted towards what you might describe as the more aggressive ends of masculine behavior. It's aimed at at masculinity in a much broader, you know, much broader range of. There's a much broader range of accusations that are underlying that are under the surface than that, and so I don't see in what way at all that it's a strong. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pause that argument for a second and go on to uh, Catherine Legrand. I mean, how could you disagree that toxic masculinity isn't a thing? That's literally everybody says that, guys. Someone's actually said it to me before. <laughs> like, guys, that, like, this lady, she's like, she's like a, she's what, the president or the MP? Man, she's terrible, man. Like, come on now. Like, we all know that term exists, guys. Like, people use that term very loosely nowadays. Like, they, they use that term, like, a lot, you know. How could you argue with that? I, this is just ridiculous. Gregor, and Catherine, I mean, you've, you've lived on both sides of the gender <laughs> fence. So um, what are your thoughts on, on these issues? And the, just go back to the question that I was raised. I don't know whether that qualifies me or disqualifies me, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, I ratted on the team, but not, because, <laughs> not, not for any sociological reasons. Intensely personal, I gather we might address that. But look, I, I, I'm not entirely out of sympathy with uh, Jordan's critique. I... I I'm the oldest person on this panel by you, Tony, and in my lifetime, I've, <laughs> I've seen, uh, you know, rolling institutional crises through the West, you know, the great American settlement based on Bretton Woods and NATO and the, and the United Nations and so on is fraying globally in the area that I can talk about with some authority. We're seeing a dissolving global order now with the rise of two autocratic totalitarian capitalist states, uh, which is replicating the conditions of the 1930. And I gather we're not doing the geostrategic stuff, but I think it's very alarming. When Robert F. Kennedy, who was my political hero, was running for the presidency of the United States in 1968, he addressed disenfranchised African Americans who were wearing the backlash from, from many white men who were losing their jobs or perceiving that they were losing their jobs. The deindustrialization of the West as, as jobs are exported to the developing world, uh, all of these factors are, uh, Bobby Kennedy said it, it wasn't Jermaine Greer that said it. He said, when you remove from a man the right to stand before his family as a breadwinner, and people will say that's patriarchal. That's your, that's your minute, by the way, so. All right, well, I'll shut up. But <laughs> the, the, the removal of meaningful work amongst especially unskilled men has a political consequence. Mm. And it's been washing through the American system since 1980 with the mm. Reagan Democrats, mm. the fraying of the New Deal coalition. I don't entirely agree with Jordan's analysis, but the, the problem can't be gainsaid. And three million books later in 50 languages or whatever it is, 
I bought, I bought your book, by the way, and uh, you're outselling Shane Warne. Now, that's a culturally <laughs> specific <laughs> reference. <laughs> that delights me in two ways, yeah. because in Australian cricket, no one has more bleached blonde hair or has had more work done than I, but Warne is a close second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we should put that out on Twitter. Account. Well, she was amazing. But, yeah, guys, like, to be honest with you, like, he's basically saying there my breakdown of this because I know a lot of people like, Chris is stupid, you know what I'm saying, he won't be able to break shit down. My breakdown of that is, she, w she was saying that, you know, they, they, you know, the man to be like the primary breadwinner, and they call this toxic masculinity if you don't want your wife to work, or whatever the case may be, is not really, you know, is, is kind of a big issue. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be, it's more of an economic issue, guys. Like, it shouldn't be to where, like, the whole family has to work for you know the freaking kids have to work as well you know that's what it's going to come down to eventually where you know that's you know what they do in the in the sand mines and stuff in you know in poor countries like it's going to come down to basically that eventually because now it's just that everyone has to work guys because the way the economic process is i mean you, you the way the economy is you can't even buy a house guys if you're a single male with a family like forget about buying a house guys shit how, how are you going to buy a house? Like, it's just ridiculous, guys. You know, you're going to have to take out a mortgage for 40 years and all this kind of thing. So, everyone's going to be working soon, guys. You know what I'm saying? Men, women, everything. So, yeah, what do you think? Toxic masculinity, guys. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Man, feminism? Leave in the comments down below. I love you all, and I'll see you guys in the next one.